Okay, hello everybody, and this is the second video for lesson 2.4. And today what we're going to do is we are going to look at finding the percent of a number by using decimal equivalents. Okay, and so how we're going to do that is we're going to, what I mean by decimal equivalents is we're going to convert our percentage into a decimal, and that's what we're going to use to find the percent of the number. So for this first example, I want to find 8% of 50. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert 8% into a decimal, and then I'm going to multiply that by 50, and that's going to tell me what 8% of 50 is. So 8% of 50, 8% I need to convert that to a decimal. If we remember from the previous video, your decimal, was, when we're converting a percentage to a decimal, we just move the decimal over twice to the left. So we can put a decimal on the end right here, because that would be 8.0%, or otherwise just known as 8. I can move my decimal over twice to the left and place it. And then I got to add a zero into this empty space right here. So 8% is, as a decimal, is just 8 hundredths, 0 0.08. And now I can multiply that by 50, and that's going to tell me what 8% of 50 is. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 5 is 40. I don't need to multiply by that last zero. It's kind of pointless. So. Now I gotta look, I have one, two numbers after my decimal, so I need to make sure I add my decimal to my answer. I need to move it over one, two places. So 4.00 is also known as just a whole number of four. So that would be my final answer. 8% of 50 is four. Let's look at another problem here. Find 67% of 90. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take 67% and I'm going to convert it to a decimal and then I'm going to multiply by 90. So when I convert 67% to a decimal, I take my decimal, move it over twice to the left. Okay, so it becomes 67 hundredths. Okay, and now I'm just going to multiply that by 90. I'm going to add a zero to the end for this zero so I don't have to do anything else. Now nine times seven is 63, bring up my 6, 9 times 6 is 54, plus this extra 6 is 60. Now i got to figure out where my decimal goes, because I can't ignore that. I have one, two numbers after my decimal, so I'm going to move my decimal over one, two places. 60 and 30 hundredths is also just can be written as 60 and 3 tenths, and that would be my final answer. So 67% of 90 is 60 and 3 tenths. Do another one. This one is worded a little bit differently, but it's the same process. Okay, so what number is 20% 20, 20 of 120? That's just another way of saying what is 20% of 120? So again, we're going to convert 20% into a decimal and then multiply by 120. So 20%, move it over twice to the left, becomes. 0 0.20, which is 20 hundredths, or I could also make that into just 2 tenths. There's no reason to have that extra zero on the end. So now I need to do 120 times 2 tenths, okay? 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. Whoops, simple mistake there, okay? i got to figure out how many numbers I have after the decimal, which is just one number after my decimal. I don't have a decimal up top. So I can move my decimal over one place to get 24 as a whole number. So 20% so of 120 would just be the whole number 24. One more problem. Now in this example, this is a word problem. Okay? And this is where we're going to see we're going to use this, this um, tool a lot. Okay, because there's always sales going on. The best thing is to find what you want to do as a, as a shopper is you want to find the best price and the best deal. Okay, so when you see a sale, you want to see actually how much it's going to cost. So here's the example. Tilly's, that's a nice store that has pretty awesome clothes that may, maybe most of you guys have been there before. So Tilly's is offering a 25% discount on all t-shirts. What is the sale price of a t-shirt that originally cost $19.99? So first thing we know is that this t-shirt, if it was not on sale, this t-shirt cost $19.99. And 
but we have a 25% discount. What that means is we can subtract whatever 25% of 1999 is, okay? And that's gonna give us our sale price. So the original cost was 1999. I, I'm gonna subtract whatever 25% of 1999 is because that's gonna be my discount. And that's gonna give me the new price, the sale price, what I'm actually gonna pay for it. So let's go ahead and work that out. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to figure out what 25% of 1999 is. And so to do that, convert 25% into a decimal, move it over twice. So that's just going to be 25 hundredths. So now I can do 1999 times 25 hundredths. And let's work it out. Switch the color here. Five times nine is 45. Five times nine again is 45 plus four. So that's 49. This is the same problem. Five times nine plus four again is 49. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 4 is 9. So there's my first row. I'm going to put an X as a placeholder and then move on to my second row. 2 times 9 is 18. Let's cross all these guys out. Bring out my 1. 2 times 9 again is 18 plus 1 is 19. Again, I have the same exact problem. 2 times 9 plus 1 is 19 plus 1. And then 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is three. So now I can add all of these up. Five plus nothing is just five. Nine plus eight is 17. Bring over my one. That's gonna be 19. Bring over my one. 19 again. Bring over my one and four. Now I've gotta figure out where my decimal goes. I have one, two numbers after the decimal. Three, four numbers after the decimal. So I'm gonna move it over. One, two, three, four. So the discount is going to be 4.9975. So what I need to do now is I can subtract this from my original price to figure out what the sale price is. Okay, And I'm going to need a little, actually I think I have enough room over here. So if I have $19.99, I'm going to subtract 25% of 1999, which we just figured out was right here. Make sure when we subtract, we line up those decimals so that all of our values are lined up correctly. And now, because I have nothing subtracting from these guys, I need to add some zeros as placeholders. And now we can do our subtraction. And what we want to be cautious of when we do our subtraction is we need to make sure we borrow when necessary. Because I cannot subtract 5 from 0. I cannot subtract 7 from 0. And I can't even borrow from 0. So I need to borrow from here. That becomes 10. I got to borrow from there just so I can get all the way to here. So a lot of borrowing going on. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 7 is 2. 8 minus 9, oh, can't do it. Got to borrow. Comes 18. 18 minus 9 is 9. 8 minus 9, oh, can't do it. Again, we have to borrow. We are going to get 9. Bring down my decimal. 8 times 4 is 4. I'm sorry, 8 minus 4 is 4, and then 1 minus nothing is 1. So my sale price is 14.9925, but because we are working with money, we're going to round to the nearest cent, okay? So here would be my nearest cent right here, or the nearest hundredths in the decimal. And I'm going to look at this 2 right here, and that's going to tell me what to do with my nearest cent, with, with my 99 cents. A two, that's closer to zero than it is closer to 10. So that's gonna make my nine stay the same. So I found out that my sale price, this shirt is gonna cost $14, oops, I ran out of room, $14.99. Okay, so again, let's just recap what we just did right here, because there's a lot of math on this page. Tilly's was offering 25% discount on t-shirts. The t-shirt that you wanted cost $19.99. Because it has a sale of 25% off, we subtracted 25% of 1999, which we found out to be $4.99 roughly, or almost actually about $5. We subtracted that from the original price to find out that that t-shirt, when it's on sale for 25% off, actually costs $14.99. So you're saving $5. Okay.
And that's it, you guys. Uh, good luck on your assignment. I'm sure you guys will do just fine.